एवरीवन, आई एम तानिया, वेलकम टू इंफिनिटी लर्न नीट बाय श्री चैतन्य सो टुडे इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द टॉपिक दैट इज डबल सर्कुलेशन अगेन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फ्रॉम द चैप्टर बॉडी फ्लूड्स एंड सर्कुलेशन एंड दिस इज द मोस्ट समराइज सेशन फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक सो दैट इट्स इजियर फॉर यू टू रिवाइज राइट बिफोर योर एग्जामिनेशन सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो टू अंडरस्टैंड डबल सर्कुलेशन इट्स रियली इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो द बेसिक फीचर्स ऑफ योर हार्ट व्हेन आई टॉक अबाउट द हार्ट यू नो दैट इट्स मीसोडर्मल इन the origin also it is situated in the thoracic cavity between the two lungs and there's a cavity over there and that cavity is known as mediastinum okay because the heart is present in the mediastinum and it is slightly tilted towards the left okay it's not present in the left it is present in the center in the thoracic cavity between the two lungs in the mediastinum but slightly tilted towards the left and if i talk about the size of the heart it is just like a clenched fist okay it's the size of your clenched fist all right now i need to tell you about the chambers when we talk about human heart we already know that there are four chambers in the human heart two relatively small upper chambers which are known as the atria and two large lower chambers which are known as the ventricle so if you look at this diagram you can clearly see we have left atrium right atrium left ventricle right ventricle so the two upper chambers which are the atria are the smaller chambers two lower chambers which are the ventricles are the larger chambers right now if you look at the septum so there is a dividation okay there is a wall which is basically dividing the chambers over here the chamber or the chambers the upper chambers are divided by the interatrial septum which is comparatively thin and muscular and the lower chambers are divided by the interventricular septum which is comparatively thick over here all right now if i talk to you about the right atrium okay so right atrium is this chamber okay whenever we prepare a heart we have to make sure that towards your right hand side you have to mention the left side towards your left uh, left hand side you have to mention right okay towards the end of the session we will also discuss how the double circulation takes place so if i talk about the right atrium over here ओके, सो राइट एट्रियम में ऑल द डीऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड ऑफ योर बॉडी गोज राइट बट हाउ इट गोज सुपीरियर वेना कावा इज दैट ब्लड वेसल व्हिच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल टू टेक द डीऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड फ्रॉम अपर पार्ट्स ऑफ योर बॉडी जस्ट लाइक हेड नेक चेस्ट अपर लिम्स ओके देन वी हैव इंफीरियर वेना कावा इंफीरियर वेना कावा इज द ब्लड वेसल व्हिच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर टेकिंग द डीऑक्सीजनेटेड ब्लड फ्रॉम लोअर पार्ट्स ऑफ योर बॉडी इंक्लूडिंग एब्डोमिन पेल्विस लोअर लिम्स ओके देन वी हैव coronary sinus coronary sinus is that blood vessel which is responsible for taking the deoxygenated blood from the myocardium or the heart region and together they take the deoxygenated blood of the body towards the right atrium okay so first of all the deoxygenated blood comes in the right atrium and then it goes to right ventricle over here okay after that what happens after that from the right ventricle the deoxygenated blood goes to the lungs where the purification happens or where the oxygenation process happens where the deoxygenated blood is converted to oxygenated blood and from the lungs the de the oxygenated blood first enters the left atrium with the help of pulmonary vein pulmonary vein is the only vein which carries oxygenated blood other than that all the veins they are responsible for carrying the deoxygenated blood right now I'll give you a quick differentiation between right and left atrium. Right atrium receives the deoxygenated blood. Left atrium receives the oxygenated blood. Right atrium may how does it happens? Superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, coronary sinus they opens into it and the deoxygenated blood of the entire body goes into the right atrium. Pulmonary veins open into the left atrium because pulmonary veins carries the oxygenated blood from the lungs towards the left atrium, right? here right atrioventricular valve is tricuspid valve valve is basically responsible in order to prevent the back flow of the blood okay so between right atrium and right ventricle over here we have the tricuspid valve between left atrium and ventricle we have bicuspid valve also known as the mitral valve so here left atrioventricular valve is bicuspid valve okay here we'll talk about another fibrous tissues which are responsible so first of all we have chordae tendinae chordae tendinae are basically those papillary muscles which hold on to the valve so that it's like you know a closing a door so that backflow of the blood again can be 
uh, prevented. It prevents bulging of AV valve too far into the atria. Then we have papillary muscles. They also somewhere are responsible for it. Then we also have ligamentum arteriosum. It connects the arc of aorta and the pulmonary trunk. Then we have columnae carnae, which are responsible for the folds of the myocardium in the ventricles. Okay. Now if I talk about the septum, the atrium and the ventricular of the same side are also separated by a thick fibrous tissue which is known as atrioventricular septum. Earlier we have spoken about the interatrial and interventricular septum. Those were between the atria and between the ventricles. But on the same side, we have a septum which separates the atria and the ventricle as well. Okay, and that is known as atrioventricular septum. However, each of these septa, they are provided with an opening through which the two chambers of the same side are connected. Okay, now if I talk about the valves, as I told you, bicuspid or the mitral valve, it's present between left atrium and left ventricle because it has two cusps, hence it is known as bicuspid. It prevents the flow of blood from left ventricle to the left atrium, technically preventing the backflow of the blood, okay? Between the right atrium and right ventricle, we have tricuspid valve, okay? It has three cusps, hence we call it tricuspid. It also prevents the flow from right ventricle to right atrium. So preventing the backflow of the blood, right? Now, if you look at this diagrammatic representation, first of all, let's look at here. From the left ventricle, uh, left ventricle receives the oxygenated blood from the left atrium with the help of aorta and then branches of aorta. Oxygenated blood is distributed to various body parts, okay? If I talk about the right ventricle, right ventricle receives the deoxygenated blood from the right atrium, okay? With with the help of pulmonary arteries, the deoxygenated blood goes to the lungs for the process of purification. Here as well, pulmonary artery is the exception because it is the only artery that carries the deoxygenated blood. Other arteries are responsible for always carrying the oxygenated blood. Okay, so now quickly, I am going to give you a summarized version of how exactly the double circulation takes place, right? So here, we have four chambers of the heart. Okay, here we can make the lungs and here are the body tissues. Always remember whenever we are drawing the structure of the heart towards your right hand side, you have to mention left. Towards your left hand side, mention right. Okay, so this becomes your left atrium, left ventricle. This becomes your right atrium and right ventricle all right so first of all let's talk about what happens in the right hand side in the right hand side you know that right atrium is that chamber which receives the deoxygenated blood right so from the body tissues the deoxygenated blood is going into the right atrium who is carrying it superior vena cava superior vena cava is responsible for carrying the deoxygenated blood from upper parts of the body right then we have inferior vena cava this is the blood vessel responsible for carrying the deoxygenated blood from lower parts of the body right and then we have coronary sinus coronary sinus is the blood vessel responsible for carrying the deoxygenated blood from the myocardium towards the right atrium so all these blood vessels are responsible for carrying deoxygenated blood to the right atrium once it reaches the right atrium then from the right atrium the deoxygenated blood goes to right ventricle from the right ventricle the deoxygenated blood goes to the lungs with the help of pulmonary artery as i told you pulmonary artery is the only artery responsible for carrying the deoxygenated blood this is an exception when it comes to arteries right so this is done now what happens in the lungs lungs may oxygenation ka process happens deoxygenated blood is converted to oxygenated blood right then from the lungs the oxygenated blood goes to left atrium with the help of pulmonary vein pulmonary vein is responsible for carrying the oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium that's also an exception only vein that carries oxygenated blood right from the left atrium oxygenated blood goes to left ventricle from the left ventricle with the help of aorta aorta is the largest artery of the body with the help of aorta the oxygenated blood is distributed to various parts of the body 
right? So this is the basic criteria how exactly the double circulation takes place over here. We have also talked about the cuspid, the cusps which are present, the septums which are present, cordae tendinae, papillary muscles, each and everything we have covered, right? So that was it for the double circulation topic. Infinity Learn brings you All India Test Series Pack, which includes 27 All India Tests, 20 Full Syllabus Mock Tests, 25 Topic Wise PYQs, 3 PCB Books with Video Solutions on the app, Performance Report so that you can analyze your performance and uh, you, can, you can work in a better way to improve your marks. And all of this you can get in just rupees 2999 if you apply the coupon code YouTube50OFF. You will get the link in the description below. I think it's a very, very good deal, very affordable and uh, very helpful for all the students who are preparing for NEET examination, right? Also, India's largest scholarship exam is coming up, which is score online for grades 3rd to the 12th, right? And uh, if you score good marks in this scholarship examination, you will get educational allowance, study setup along with the laptop, up to 100% scholarship. So do not miss this amazing chance. Again, the link is in the, uh, in the description. You just have to click on the link and everything will be done. So that was it for today's session. If you found this particular session helpful, do not forget to hit the like button. Also subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon so that no more notifications are missed from your end. Thank you.